vein anemometer. Now, the vein anemometer, as you can see on the screen here, if you're at the podcast, basically you see, uh, basically it looks like a fan. And they can be really small, like two inches across. They can be larger, like this Testo one. I think it's Testo, I want to say it's a 417. You guys in the chat out there, if you know the right answer, feel free to tell me. But Testo 417 is just a really large vein anemometer. It's a really nice one. It gets a good cross-section of air to measure. And basically, air is either blowing across this thing or drawing through it. It is blowing across it, but as a return, I think of drawing through it. And you're measuring how fast that air is getting through there, and then you're going to make a calculation based on how big the grill is that you are on so you can get a CFM measurement. So this is handy, but it also has drawbacks. What's handy about this, it doesn't matter what blower is in that machine. It doesn't matter because this process is universal. As long as you can get to grills, there are drawbacks we'll talk about in a second. I use this process for a long time. I am in a place. I am in North Carolina. It's eastern, next to the coast of North Carolina, heat pump world. There aren't many gas furnaces here unless that municipality has had gas in there for a long time. Like Wilmington, North Carolina, I would have done service calls there. And if you go to the older parts of town, you might have natural gas lines, and they have natural gas furnaces and natural gas packs. So you'd see some of that, mainly heat pumps. But a lot of it is run either in the attic with the ductwork or in the crawl space. Nasty. But not all crawl spaces are bad. And basement? No. There's no basements here. Uh, probably 2% of houses have a basement here in North Carolina that are located in my region. So you're not going to get that close, which is good for hot wire, which is the next thing we're going to talk about. But you just go to return grills, and you'll measure that, and you'll potentially have more than one grill to measure. So if you have three returns, you have to add those up and get your total CFM. It's a little bit more work because you're not right there at the unit doing it, but it's something you can do pretty much anywhere, at least in my area, and get a pretty good measurement, depending on the duct system again. Vane anemometer, the drawbacks, you measure at the grill. Measuring at the grill, why is that a drawback? Well, the big drawback is the duct systems are not perfect. So if you have... 80 foot of ductwork coming from that grill over to the unit, I bet it leaks. And you don't know how much it leaks unless you've done some sort of duct blaster test, which is not service tech land. Then you're going into, I'm standing, I'm, I'm building for performance guy. You've left service tech land. I like to teach this stuff that is service tech related because I was a service tech at heart. That's what I love doing. I love fixing random stuff, challenges. That's right. That's why yours truly here. When someone said, you want to go on a tugboat and fix the air conditioner? I was like, yes, I do. It was not what I thought it was going to be. And it was not an abnormal system. It was something I would have seen every day, put in a very wrong way. Which is, and I'll tell you this because we're talking about this not perfect world. So I go to this tugboat, and this will be a short story. This seems like it's getting off the point, but it really isn't. I go to this tugboat, and I expected some sort of water-cooled, like really cool Florida heat pump type deal or something on a boat. I don't know what I was imagining. I've never seen the AC on a tugboat before or any boat really. But what it was was a seven and a half ton carrier split system. If that sounds insane, right? When you say it, it's like no way it was that. Yes, that's what it was. It was in like a little hatch on the inside of this boat next to the stairs, of course, where you had to put a ladder like, sideways to run it from the wall down to the stairs that was where it was located i'm pretty sure this wasn't made at the tugboat factory i hope not it has a tiny grill underneath it for return air which was our problem that we ended up with because 7.5 tons of air that is a lot that is a whole lot let's see we have if we have a five ton system that's a nominal 2000 cfm so seven and a half ton is three thousand Dang, that's going to have to be a pretty big grill. It was not. Talk about whistling Dixie. And uh, those outlets got great airflow because there was only like six of them. That was a bad thing. So you got to make the best out of a bad situation on that. But that can be a hard measurement to make because you have to have a little bit of dexterity in your hands because you're supposed to hold it a certain amount. You're supposed to be even. Like you're measuring a grill, you're moving that thing along the grill slowly and trying to keep an equal speed throughout the entire run. Because a lot of these 
these particular anemometers, they have time runs where you either run it like 30 seconds or you can run it as long as you want. You just start and stop and then it'll average out that run. If you go real fast across the top and the top of that grill will get, has higher airflow, so to speak, and the bottom is less, which does happen in a lot of grills because you have orientation to the ductwork. If you change ductwork leading up to a grill or heading from a grill and it has a bunch of bends right there off the bat, it will definitely affect how the air flows into the grill. So if you don't do it evenly, you won't get a good measurement. Even if you get a good measurement, you have to worry about leakage. Now, coming from load calculations back in the day, uh, I would expect to see like 5 or 10% leakage at least on a duct system. So you can always say, all right, I'm assuming that some leaked, but I would keep that low if you make that assumption because you don't want to make it seem like your airflow is higher than it really is. Because if you say, I'm getting 1,000 CFM at the grill, and I'm sure there's 10% leaking, that means there's over 1,000 really, but I can only measure that because I can only measure what's coming through the grill. I can't measure what's coming through the seams and the ductwork or that big hole where they use the floorboards to pan something. That's, that's one of my favorite things to do. We did that when I started to trade. We were the guys who did that. So if, in case you wonder when you're tearing that out, that was us. You're welcome. Those leak all the time. Because it's very hard to seal up metal screwed to the bottom of a floor joist. Unless you just want to spray caulk on it, just like fill the whole thing and make it look like Slimer from Ghostbusters. You want to fill that whole thing with caulk? But oh no, it's next to a pier. What are you going to do now? And that's what happened with all those things. If you want to add like 5% onto it, that's something I think is reasonable. You can look at the duct system. If it looks like hell, you might be adding more. But the problem is you might be off by quite a bit unless you're measuring the leakage in the duct system, which we're not doing. Remember, we're on a service call. We're not measuring leakage. That's a different guy. Mm -hmm.